Hi, James with TVS Pro, and we are doing another video today, this time on Intelligent Flight Mode. It's kind of a part two. And if you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button. We're always coming out with new stuff. Uh, this is by popular demand. Uh, we did a, a Intelligent Flight Mode about a year ago um, on waypoint flying, point of interest, course lock, home lock, and follow me. If you are looking for instruction on those flight modes, you're gonna wanna hit this button here to go to that video. We're not gonna talk about those ones because within the last year, we have seen uh, the release of, in, at least in DJI's world, a Mavic, a Phantom 4, a Phantom 4 Pro, today I've got a Pro Plus, and an Inspire 2. And with those new systems, we have seen some cool upgrades in firmware, as well as some crazy cool intelligent flight modes. Things like terrain follow and active track and, uh, well, the list goes on and on. We're gonna get into it. Uh, so stay tuned for that, but that other video you're gonna wanna click on. So part two of intelligent flight modes. Um, I also want to stress to you the importance of safety and responsible drone operation. It seems like in the last few months, uh, with the holidays especially, things have gotten a little bit out of hand. Please know that you need to register your drone, whether it is for hobby use or commercial use. Yes, you do need to register it. You can go to websites like knowbeforeyoufly.org. That is an FAA sanctioned website and where you will be able to register your craft. Please, we are all in this together. We are all ambassadors and unfortunately the few can ruin it for the many. Uh, you are ultimately responsible, so please be safe, pay attention to weather, and I might add that there is a website and an app that I use all the time called uavforecast.com. It will really help you know if the conditions that you are flying in on a particular time of day are optimal for drone operation, okay? With that, uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to, or questions, tips, and things like that, feel free to leave those comments there and I will get to them as quickly as I possibly can. You're also welcome to email me at jamesb at tvspec.com for kind of larger in-depth troubleshooting. Hopefully the dealer from whom you've purchased your system from offers you the same support that we offer our customers. So for those kind of larger questions and heavy troubleshooting, please refer to the dealer from whom you have purchased your system. Okay, I've got a Mavic and a Phantom 4 Pro Plus here. And to say that all of these systems, including the Inspire 2, have more flight modes than the other is not really accurate. They all have about the same, but some are available on some platforms that aren't available on others. And we're gonna get into that, okay? And actually, before I do, I kind of wanted to show you, this is one of the brand new accessories that DJI released for the Mavic. Uh, this is the new sun hood, and if you don't think that this was, I don't know, this is just personal opinion, uh, manufactured maybe in cahoots with Apple, I sure think it is. Uh, it looks just like some of their smart cases for their iPads and things like that. But there you saw it unfolded. Here's my antennas that I've got folded out to a 45 on my Mavic, and you've just got these little pockets here. Your antennas slide right, let me push that over a little bit right down over the top and it's a good snug fit. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. And there you go, there's your sun hood. What's cool if you push that all the way over and then you fold this back and there's your magnets. I mean, just like those smart covers. And uh, I mean, it's not perfect, but definitely in outdoor use that is going to help cover up or shade your screen from the sun that makes it so hard for us to see. With the uh, Phantom 4 Pro Plus monitor, we've got a thousand nits on this guy. My screen just uh, turned off on me. I'm gonna turn that back on. A thousand nits, that's just about uh, two times brighter than the brightest iPad, uh, at least in a mini size that I know of. Uh, really a nice monitor, 1080p, really kind of good. So before we get too far into this, let me power this guy on. And I'm gonna connect up my iPad to my Mavic radio here. Please keep in mind, if you are doing this, you're gonna want to use, and I'm gonna remove this here. 
Let's throw that over there. You're gonna wanna use the USB port that is on the bottom of this radio, but if you're going to do that to connect up a larger device, you do need to unplug this side cable that you're typically using for smaller smart devices. It will not do dual or simultaneous monitoring. So you've gotta unplug that one, plug this in, open up the app. There it says I'm RC connected. I'm gonna power up my Mavic. Okay, I'm gonna click on the bottom right, go into enter device. We've had a long run of some snowfall. It's been a little bit difficult to find some time uh, to get outside and uh, do some of these flight modes. So it's gonna be broken up into some sections here. Uh, some of the stuff that you're gonna see, I uh, had an opportunity to go up to the Park City Film Studios and uh, they let me fly in one of their sound stages there. Uh, so some of the footage in some of these uh, intelligent flight modes we're gonna be demonstrating is gonna be using some of that footage because of just some crazy weather. Um, let me hit go fly, and there's our stream. App is open, and on the left-hand side there, you're gonna see that radio symbol. That's how you're going to activate those, uh, or open up the options for intelligent flight modes. You do need to tell it to activate or enable those flight modes, but I've already done that, so I'm gonna click on that symbol, and there's some of those. Now, on the Phantom 4 Pro, there is a flight mode that you're not going to be able to access on uh, the Mavic, and there are some that the Mavic will do that the Pro Plus won't. Same things with the Inspire 2. I know that the Inspire 2 won't enable draw function, and that is available on the Phantom 4 Pro and Pro Plus, is that draw function. We are going to demonstrate to, that to you today, um, and some of the ones here on the Mavic, I've got gesture, active track, tap fly, cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is only available on the Mavic, not on the Pro, Pro Plus, or Inspire 2. Tripod, Terrain Follow, and then there are those additional five that are mentioned or discussed in that previous video that we did last year. Gesture, it changes it to active track mode because it has to track in order to do this. So I'm gonna put the phone down. It's tracking me right now. The camera is tilting up and down. You're not gonna be able to see this because it's not recording. So I'm going to gesture. So it's active tracking me, and then I'm gonna do this in front of my face. Can you see those red lights? Let's do it again. It worked, it took a photo. It's tracking me. Photo! Okay, we're gonna do another one. Last one. Here we go, tracking me. That's great. Okay, that's gesture. Touch the radio symbol on the left. Touch active track. Highlight the individual. It will normally show green instead of red. And then there's your three options on the right. This is standard active track with the trace option. I'm not doing any POI, just tracing. Hi mom. And once again, with all the other flight modes you notice as I move away from it, it automatically tilts the camera. I want to thank Park City Film Studios for allowing me to go up a few days before a drone expo during Sundance that I did. So this is me being silly because I'm talking to the audience in my brain, practicing for the presentation during that expo. What you're seeing here is active track, trace, with a little bit of POI or point of interest. I've only got it set to about 15 or 18% and going counterclockwise. And you'll notice that as I'm walking around, it is following me as well as doing point of interest around me also. Uh, and at the same time as I control the altitude, it is also tilting that camera up and down based on whether I approach it or scoot further back or increase or decrease my altitude. And it's actually quite fun. It isn't a flawless system. It actually, with the obstacle avoidance, was having a little bit of difficult time. Kept on giving me an error of ambient light too low, and that combined with the black walls of this particular soundstage 
the obstacle avoidance wasn't working so well. This is the sound of music portion where I'm just gloriously singing or pretending to, and whoa, there I am at the top of Mount Everest. There is your glory victory shot, or maybe a rocky shot, I don't know. I also want to point out that during any of these intelligent flight modes, there is a beloved pause button there. You can press that at any time and it will stop the motion in whatever flight mode you're doing. To do a different mode of active track, same thing, highlight the person and there's your three options on the right. Okay, this is option two of active track, which is profile. Pretty self-explanatory. You set it at your 90 degree, start walking in that direction, and it stays at your 90 degree instead of tracing you from behind. Yeah, let's go for a walk this way. So in this portion, I'm still doing profile, but I try to trick it. So let's speed up and go up faster and see if we can get it, but it actually does pretty good. You can tell that there's a little bit of a buffer and it has to catch up to me and I start to get way far ahead of it. So it starts to really speed up and try to keep up with me. I come to an abrupt stop and it lost me. So now within active track, I want to change it from profile to spotlight. So again, I touch active track, highlight my individual and touch spotlight. This is option three of Active Track, which is Spotlight. Again, pretty self explanatory. You notice that the Mavic isn't moving. It's just staying put, rotating, yawing, and tilting the camera based on where it is that I move. This could be incredibly useful. Say you're doing some motocrossing, tracking a motorcycle going around, and again, I'm trying to trick it. So I run around, speed it up, and it actually does pretty darn good following me. Again, you can tell that there's a little bit of a buffer there. We try to juke it, nope, and it stuck with me. I couldn't trick it, way to go. Okay, next up is tap fly. Simply touch tap fly, and a velocity meter appears on the right side. Gauge how fast you want it, and then touch above or at that white line that appears near the top, and it will just fly that straight line, maintaining that altitude. If you touch below that white line, it'll go to that point, but it will descend. And do the same thing. Say tap fly, go. That stop button and the pause button are the same thing, but it's kind of nice because you can feel it with your thumb so you don't have to look on your phone to where it is. You can just feel it with your thumb and know that at any point you can hit stop. Kind of nice. Okay. In terrain follow, you need to designate your altitude before you tap on that app. It can't be a maximum of 40 feet. So my left thumb is not going to correct the altitude. And it will maintain that altitude and follow the terrain. Look at that. But keep in mind, it gets really close, because I'm low. Don't you dare hit that ground. Oh, that footage is gonna look amazing. But if I had started at a higher altitude, it would not have gotten that close. No higher than 40 feet. Next up is cinematic and tripod mode. Very similar. Tripod mode, as you're going to see, desensitizes all of your controls to really get some smooth cinematic shots. We're gonna skip cinematic mode because it does essentially the same thing, except it only desensitizes the yaw movement of your craft. Drone Expo during Sundance 2017, sponsored by the MW USA, hasn't gotten started yet, so I'm just doing some pre-flights here. This is tripod mode, nothing autonomous. This is fully manual, I am flying this. I am rolling to my left, yawing to my right, decreasing my altitude, and tilting the camera up all at the same time. This is ideal with tripod mode. Doing slow motions like this would be hard without tripod mode. We are out at the Salt Lake RC port and we've got over 500 feet, I think close to 600 feet, like 18 feet wide of newly freshly paved runway. This is really cool. This is the first time I've been out here. It opened up like 
couple months ago, like early November. It's maybe two months old is all. Now we're gonna show you draw function of intelligent flight modes. This is only available on the Phantom 4 Pro and Pro Plus. After I show you draw function, we're gonna try something that I don't think anybody has yet to try. I've got a Phantom 4 Pro Plus and I've got a Mavic. We're gonna take the Phantom 4 Pro Plus up into the air, take the Mavic into the air, and active track the Phantom, and then fly the Phantom around and see if the Mavic can keep up with it, and then do vice versa and see which one of those performs better. So here we go. Touch my radio on my left, select draw, and now I'm just going to draw my path. So here's my start point. We're gonna draw this and go left and then right. Let it upload. I can designate the speed. We're gonna go eight miles an hour just about and say go. And now it's got an augmented reality. I'm gonna hit record. And here's my flight path that it is drawing. Doing pretty good. It's just about coming over our heads behind me. It's gonna make a sharp right turn. Now it's coming right over the top of us. Make a sharp left turn. I gave it some sharp angles here. Should come up and turn around and face us. Still going, there it goes. And it's gonna come around and face us, turn around and stop. Let's draw, perfect. Okay, there we go, there's that. Let me get the Phantom up in the air. Okay, we're gonna go beyond the Mavic. Okay, we're gonna rest him for a second. Now I've got the Mavic. Let's go find the bird. Hit record. Okay. And now we're going to go into active track and highlight it. Does it find it? It did. It says it's out of range, but there we go. Okay, we're gonna say go. And now I'm gonna put the Mavic radio down. It's tracking it. And let's fly the Phantom and see if they follow each other. Let's look at each other. Can you see each other? There's the Mavic. It's following it. It sure wants to. We're going real slow. Look, they're they're. It's following it, and I'm backing up with the Phantom to get this all in footage. It's doing it. <laughs> the Mavic sure is having a hard time. It's sure stressing about it. Okay. Okay, I, I'm gonna go back over this way. Look at it rotate around. Oh, I got too close to it, it lost it. There, the Mavic lost it, it finally lost it. It did pretty good. There we are. Okay, Actor track you. There, it found it, trace. 
Okay, it's got it. Phantom Four. Oh, what was that? It like oh, they almost crashed into each other. I'm not doing it again. Oh, I don't want it to crash into it. Come on, you gotta work. It like, did you see that? It wanted to like run into it. Hold on, I gotta get it in the white. Maybe it'll see it better if it's in the white. Okay, here we go. Highlight. It keeps on saying subject out of range. But it seems to be tracking it. Okay, I'm recording there. And I'm recording here. Let's go backwards. Oh, it's not, it's not going. It lost it. Well, I think the Mavic has better active track than the Phantom 4 Pro. All right, one more time. Okay. But uh, drop the Phantom lower than the Mavic, so you have the sky as the background. Okay. Okay, so let's go. This is really hard, and my fingers are numb. Okay, so there, and if we highlight you. Yeah, it says subject out of range. It says it's tracking it. So if I go off this way, just side to side. Oh, there it goes. So let's go this way. It's like doing spotlight mode, but it is working. It's like in spotlight mode, it's not moving, but it is tracking it. Oh, it lost it. Yeah, it lost it now. Okay, well there you go. Okay, I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring them both down now. Stop record, stop record. So, it appears that the Mavic uh, actively tracked the Phantom better than the Phantom tracking the Mavic. And I don't know if that has anything to do with the color Maybe the bright white is easier to see than the stealth black of the Mavic? I don't know. The Phantom did do okay, but it was like it was in spotlight mode. So it was just kind of sitting there and rotating or yawing and following it, but it wouldn't actually engage it proximity and try to track it that way. Uh, but it appears the Mavic actually did pretty darn good following the Phantom around. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. Like I said, because of the snowfall over the last few weeks, we had to skip and choose different shoots uh, that we've done. And some of the footage that you saw, like with Terrain Follow uh, and Tap Fly, that was with the Mavic that we duplicated that footage from a Mavic full instruction video that we did a little while back. And you can click on this link here to get to that video and just skip through some of those flight modes since we've covered them also here. But if you're wanting to know some of the, all the nooks and crannies and whatnot, that video is very in-depth and, and, and gives you all the information that you need. Uh, like I said, if you've got some comments, feel free to leave those and don't forget to subscribe. We appreciate you watching. I'm James with TVS Pro. Good luck and happy flying.